In competitive programming, we often see this sentence in statements. As answer can be huge, print it modulo p, some usually prime value, and it's very common that p is equal to billion seven. It's a big prime number. Why is that, and what should we do about it in our codes? Indeed, answers sometimes can be huge. Example of that is to compute 2 to nth power, because, for example, we need to compute the number of subsets of some set of numbers. Or we need to count permutations. n factorial, so n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, grows very big. Already for n equal to 1000, this is n factorial. And you would need to print this if you are asked about the number of permutations of n elements. And there are two issues with this. First is that many languages, like C++, do not support by default so big integers. You need to implement something yourself or include a strange library. There are languages like Python that do support big integers by default, but even with them there is some issue. Any operations with such numbers are slow. Even something as simple as adding them, not even multiplying, takes linear time of size of their length, then let's say the number of digits. So computing uh, like n factorial, even though it is n multiplications, it's not O of n. It is O of n times this uh, complexity of multiplying two numbers, and this is even slower than L. It requires FFT or L square is uh, just multiplying. Actually, it is big number by something small, so let's say it's just this. And this is much worse than O of n, and we cannot compute n factorial well for n equal to 1 million. It is too slow. So instead of to deal with those issues, the difference between languages and things being slow because of the arithmetic, instead of printing this value, you should print only some information about it. And then we need remainder modulo some value. 17 modulo 5 is what is left if we divide 17 by 5. Uh, 17 is 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 2 is left. This is a remainder. Uh, we have 3 5, so 17 over 5 is 3. And in programming, we have an operator modulo for that. We write 17 modulo 5 to get that value 2. And problem author, instead of asking you to print this, they will tell you print n factorial modulo m or modulo p. It is given usually in the statement. So it would be nice to say that this is code for computing n factorial. It is not correct, because as you compute 1 times 2 times 3, this of course iterates from 1 to n, i++, plus plus, so com multiplies answer by every next i. Why is it incorrect? Because it has overflows as we go. Times 2, 3, 4, 5, eventually we will get this huge number, we will try to keep it in int type, also operations would be slow if it was in Python, and only at the end we take uh, this. This doesn't resolve any issues. It only changes output format. Instead, as we go, we need to take module for every next operation. It isn't though obvious why it works now. So why is it correct if we need to compute some answer and at the end print it modulo m? Why is it okay as we get some temporary values to also compute them modulo m? It's quite easy to explain with an example because here not only n factorial is taken modulo m every partial factorial is taken modulo m, and maybe that changes the final answer. Also here, we, uh, with just this code, we would have an overflow, answer must be long long, or we need to cast this into long long. Otherwise you have billion times billion, that overflows in C++. If I told you to compute a product, let's say 256 times, uh, well, uh, this was a power of 2 just by coincidence, 257 times 6, 1, 2, 6. And you need to compute the answer modulo 10. Most of you should know that the modulo 10 it just means to print the last digit. I don't even know how many digits this answer has. I don't care. The thing is, we should only take a look at the last digit of both numbers we multiply. 7 times 6 is 42. So I claim this digit is 2. And that's the answer. I don't care about everything here. What happened is we multiply a times b and I just took a modulo 10, it's 7, b modulo 10, it's 6, and I multiplied them. I got 
2 and the answer is also taken modulo 10 so I got a 2 that's the answer the same happened here not only the answer is taken modulo m at the end but also every partial thing it's allowed to take it modulo m and remember about overflows this should be long long or here we need to cast into long long i in c++ also because answer is mm, decreased uh, it's taken modulo m every time at the end we don't really need this it's okay to leave it out because after the last operation this operation after the last iteration this operation was already applied to answer every time answer is in proper interval Re values of remainders can be from z 0 to modulo minus 1 if you ever wonder this is also we will print value for sure in this interval if you know C++ and understand what happened so far you should be able to say what is wrong with this code let's say the problem is there is a rectangle of size a by b we need to compute its area and b are huge up to 10 to 18 and the product is up to 10 to 36 that doesn't even fit in long long so instead the statement also says print the answer modulo billion seven um, let's say mod is equal billion seven and somebody wrote this code you're seeing below what's wrong with that just like with factorial this already has overflow something of this magnitude times another thing of this magnitude is too big for long long so we cannot just say that again applying this just at the end doesn't solve any issues instead it is okay just like with modulo 10 to take both of those values modulo mod and this is a correct code we take a modulo something b modulo something and we apply modulo at the end as well now there is no overflow if we operate with long longs because this number is smaller than m up to billion seven this is up to billion seven so the product fits in long long because it's around 10 to 80. this operation this whole code this whole code is the same with what i showed you here at the bottom with seven and six generally if we have a and b both are in proper interval from zero to mod minus one if they are already not huge we don't need to take them modulo then addition and multiplication are very easy it's just a plus b modulo m and a times b modulo m just remember about casting to long long if you use ints and assuming that mod is around a billion subtraction is more tricky let's work with an example of computing 21 minus 18 modulo 10 usually in problems we have prime modulo equal to billion seven but here in this video i want to give you some smaller examples and then it's easier to work modulo 10 this should be free instead if i compute uh, this modulo 10 1 minus this is 8 i will get minus 7. modulo 10 3 and minus 7 are equal just like 3 and 13 are equal the remainder is the same if divided by 10 but this is a bit strange in programming languages but indeed we can get a negative value and to fix that there are two ways uh, well, maybe in some programming languages it's resolved by default and we get a non-negative value but in most languages we need to either do this if answer became negative then increase mod this fixes from minus 7 to 3 either this extra line or uh, alternatively take this value minus 7 add modulo and apply up modulo again let's slightly increase this box semicolon and this is another correct code a bit more maybe elegant because it's one line if our subtraction got a negative score then we need to add modulo and then apply the modular operator at the end if this was uh, non-negative it, it was already like free then adding mod and applying modular operator will do nothing free plus 10 modulo 10 is again free so nothing changed uh, once you are done with some easy problems about that you can start caring about the speed of such operations and actually modular operator is quite slow compared to multiplication or addition so that version with if is faster and if you want to really squeeze your running time because you slightly get time limit exceeded 
then it might be worth it to switch this in to if instead. But by default, and also for all easy problems, just use this method for subtraction. Those are three basic operations. There is fourth, division. And division is extremely hard. I will show you this on example of 28 divided by 7 modulo 10. Of course, this is some variable A, this is some variable B. Maybe both you computed in some way, and in order not to get overflows, you applied modulo to them. Instead, you are dividing 8 over 7. And how from this should you get a 4? Because this is 4. There, is, there seems to be no way for that. And uh, there is a way, but it's quite tricky. And it works mainly, let's say, for prime modulo. We can say that 8 times 7, it is 8 times inverse of 7. Of course, it is the same thing. And it is possible to compute inverse of 7. For now, you should just treat it as kind of a black box. For prime p, Euler's theorem says that inverse of b is b power p minus 2. So if that prime number is billion 7, then b raised to power billion 5 will give you inverse of b. So this whole code, a times this power of b, modulo p, will give you a divided by b. Uh, you can read more about this theorem online. In general, it says that we need to take b power phi of phi of modulo minus one, where phi is the number of numbers smaller than mod co prime with mod. And for 10, it is, I think, 4. So for 10, this gives us that we need to compute b to 3. And you can check that if this was our b, because we divide a by b, 7 to third power should give us an inverse of 7. This modulo 10 is what, 49, then 9 times 7, I think it's 3. 3 is the last digit, modulo 10 of 7 cubic. And if we replace this by 3, we will compute 24, and this indeed gives 4. But it's it's okay for you, if uh, you are a beginner, to assume that it is kind of magic, but you can use this formula. And the main formula is b to p minus 2. In the next video, in the next lecture, you will see how to efficiently compute power. Just remember that this shouldn't be any built-in function. Either it it can use real values. In many languages, there is something like POV to compute a power b, and it will work, work with real values, so it will be not precise. Alternatively, maybe it works with huge integers, it will really compute this number, and then it's very slow. No, instead, this should be implemented as multiplication of b, p minus 2 times, modulo m every time. But later we will speed this up. Right now, this is a very Slow algorithm if you just multiply b by itself maybe billion times. That's too slow. We'll see later in the next video how to do it. The summary of what happened um, today is that authors of problems ask us for value modulo m for several reasons. Uh, it's unfair to some languages and it's nice to make all languages equal for competitive programming. Some issues are unsolvable like speed of languages or maybe it's hard to deal with them. But, for example, C++ doesn't support huge integers, Python does, so it's better to use modulo, not to penalize 80% of participants. Uh, slow computations in all languages, so that's an issue impossible to dealt with other than to give modulo. Also with division, uh, sometimes the problem is compute probability of something happening. Like, you toss a coin n times, what's the probability that all of those will be heads. Then this probability is one half for heads every time, power n, and for n equal to million, this is basically zero. Somebody instead of solving problem could just say print zero. No other solution will anyway get a precise answer. And instead, if the, in those fields, so-called field modulo p, zp, it is possible to compute this value. And Basically, it is the same cheat as with remainder. By saying compute things modulo p, 
authors give you a tool where you can easily implement the normal program as with integers or real values and then just apply modulo every time and you will get some answer. If you solve problem correctly, that answer at the end will be the same as real answers by organizers. So it's a way to kind of treat the issue with real values and precision. Because this is basically equal to zero if computed by any reasonable program. And the last thing is that, well, computing things modulo m is just a technique like many others. Why are there updates in some problems? Because it requires you to use maybe segment trees. And doing things modulo m also requires some techniques, which maybe you will not like, but you need to know them. Once you move to advanced problems, just remember about this. Module operation is slow, and for example with addition, just like with subtraction. This is slower, maybe around three times slower, than this alternative version. Eventually you need to switch to this. It might be reasonable to have functions for that, or even a whole struct, some wrap-up, so that your main code you would write normally, without any modulo, but really if you run it, every operation is taken modulo m. If you watch this video, then likely you are a beginner in the world of competitive programming. And to you, I recommend this CSES problem set, the introductory problems from that. And related to today's lecture will be bit strings, where you basically need to print the number of binary strings of length n, and it's just 2 to n. This problem says, given n, compute 2 to n, modulo this. This is the most basic example of what we are talking about today. But also there are some examples of problems with big integers where you need to think instead. This one is about computing n factorial, not really computing n factorial, about saying what's the number of zeros at the end of that. The number of zeros at the end isn't just some remainder. There you need to think, if you take every next factorial, then when some new zeros will appear. And a bit related to that, you might ask why those prime values, like in previous problem, was billion seven. If it's prime, then it's always possible to compute an inverse, so to divide, unless uh, we divide by zero or divide by m, the, the, the modulo, but also uh, some, if, those was, if that was modulo 10, if somebody asked you to compute n factorial modulo 10, then you would almost always could just print, then you could almost always just print zero, because factorials, starting from 5 factorial, every such number has 0 at the end. And instead, modulo billion 7, numbers usually don't have such strange properties, and you cannot cheat that. You just need to solve a problem and apply modulo at every operation. That's something you need to remember from this lecture. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.